So I'm going to do a little voiceover for some of these dives I've done over the last kind of six, 10 weeks. Um, I'm diving on an island here offshore by a kilometer. Uh, it was a bit of a big shore dive. And what I'm trying to do here is face into the current whipping around the island. Um, hopefully that's where the fish would be, up current of the reef. On this occasion, as I check over my shoulder, I see that there's a pretty decent fish behind me, which is not ideal. So I'm kind of trying to keep tabs on it at the moment and just assessing where it's moving. Probably moved my gun a little bit too quickly here, but um, the fish came back in for another look and presented a pretty good opportunity for a shot, which is pretty fortunate. That one worked out okay. So still diving the same kind of set of islands and pinnacles. Um, I've just seen a pair of seals and usually in this area they're really timid and kind of don't really like being around people in the water. So I was pretty surprised when the seals came back around for what can only be described as a very close look and I don't think the GoPro really does it justice but it was probably about half a foot away from my face which when you're not really used to diving with seals can be a bit concerning. So this is a different day, different dive. And what I'm doing here is I'm trying to get underneath the line of the kelp and see if I can get the drop on any pollock that are just kind of sitting on top of the kelp bed. Uh, what I did there, I came back in, dived about 10 meters away from where I wanted to pop up. Uh, this is actually a dive taken towards the end of the day and I had heaps of fish on the string here that pollock's about three or four pounds but um, I had heaps there and it didn't really come up with a, a really clear shot so I decided to not pull the trigger there and hopefully it comes back bigger and stronger next year. <laughs> So this is probably my favourite place to dive um, in Ireland and it's a set of cliffs kind of nearby where I live. Um, don't really dive it terribly often, you kind of, it is fairly inaccessible, you probably need a kayak to get out there. Um, on this particular day, I um, tried my best to get the moons and the tides to be working in my favour and I've kind of been eyeing it all summer. And today was the day that I decided to go out. It was <laughs> as fishy as I've seen it. You know, plenty of fish on a two or three pound mark. But um, this one that cruised in a little bit later in the dive, um, yeah, came close enough to present a shot. And, you know, where I can, um, I very much like to get in that side on stone shot. Uh, and hopefully um, that's the result that we get. Here's another example of trying to dive into the kelp and sometimes pollock will literally approach you as you're do like dropping down through the water column. So unfortunately for that one, uh, it kind of spooked pretty early. And when they spook like that, uh, they don't really come back. But as you can see here, there's still heaps and heaps of other fish cutting the body. I thought that, you know, if there's any other big pollock in the area, that they might want to come in. But um, nothing really appeared after that big one. One of the things um, that interests me about the UK is how obsessed people get with <laughs> what depth they're diving and how long they're diving for. I would say my experience in, at least in Ireland, um, you know, breath hold isn't the most important thing in the world. It's all about concealing yourself in the kelp, getting low. And, you know, most of my dives, they're, they don't need to be much longer than a minute because I'm seeing the fish, I'm shooting the fish, and I'm ready to go again. Uh, it's different in Australia when I was diving there, you know, two minute breath hold is definitely more advantageous to have. But as you can see here, like the fish come right in, you don't need a super long breath hold, but that fish probably didn't even know I was there until you know, it was too late for it. So uh, my recommendation would be worry less about the breath hold and worry more about how you're presenting yourself in the water.
So I think for me, Pollock, um, which are predominantly what I shoot here in the west coast of Ireland, are really tolerant of divers, they're really tolerant of movement, of gun movement, so you can get yourself into pretty bad habits in terms of spearfishing <laughs> elsewhere by hunting them. So what I'm trying to do here, I've seen the Pollock approaching from a couple of metres away, and I'm trying to move that gun as smoothly as I can without kind of poking out at the fish, you know, as I extend it out there. I tried to do that in one like fluid motion rather than jerking it out and where possible aiming where you think the fish is gonna swim rather than at the fish and then having to, with a fully extended arm, try and drag the gun across the path of where you think the fish is then gonna be. Uh, makes it very difficult. So this is a very local dive that I do very occasionally. It's fished a lot, it's got a lot of recreational water users, so I'm hitting it kind of late afternoon um, on a high tide, and it's only about six, seven meters deep, so it's very accessible for people who are new to the sport. Um, but yeah, a massive pollock came in, uh, probably about six and a half, seven pounds, so not a giant, but for the area, a pretty sizable fish. Uh, you'll see there that my roller gun wasn't fully loaded just because I was expecting to see fish that were a little bit closer and smaller. So I think one of the reasons I do that is to extend the longevity of my bands on the gun. I think sometimes I'll have my rollers on two thirds um, load, if that makes sense. And I think for me, that's always done pretty well to extend the longevity of the bands if you know you're not going to be seeing fish that are that bit further away or a bit larger but there's obviously pros and cons to that as well because if you do see a big fish and your gun's not loaded adequately you're going to be kicking yourself and that's definitely happened to me as well So I think there's an awful lot of contentious issues within spearfishing and one of them being uh, how sustainable is it or you know how fair is it on the fish that you're going there and shooting with a gun. And I think one of the things that I typically would pride myself on is shot selection, like only taking on shots that I think are well within my capability. And this is probably not a good example of this because this fish is very much on the edge of this gun's range. It's been a long day and I think if you're a spare fisherman or woman watching this, you know, we've all been there where you see a fish at the end of the day and maybe take a shot that you wouldn't have earlier out of desperation, even knowing it's going to be there the next day. So, um, yeah, not a great example of shot selection, but uh, fortunately this fish stayed intact. I chewed my flopper on the spear probably every two dives. So, uh, yeah, I think that's another big point is maintain your gear, look after it, and in turn, I think you're going to have less gear failures and you're going to secure more fish. <laughs> Hope you enjoyed the video guys um i don't typically make very many of these but um if it gets a good response and people are keen to see more of this style of video uh, drop a comment drop a like and let me know <laughs>